perfect hi Kitter. thank you so much for joining this podcast episode really appreciate it how are you today Yeah, thank you for having me on. Um, such a pleasure to meet you, and I'm good. Thank you. Hope you're doing well too. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing really, really great. And yeah, super excited to have a conversation with you today. Learn more about yourself, your journey into business, as well as like we're going to cover like a them topic, which is three pillars in business, where you uh, mostly talk about. So before that, get into the topic, uh, can you start off like uh, where you're all began, like uh, when you decided to become an entrepreneur for yourself and helping other business owners? Yeah, of course. Um, so my journey started quite early on. Um, first and foremost, my my family, they're all entrepreneurs, my my parents, my uncles, my aunts. So it's kind of ingrained for me from a young age. And um, when I was 19, I had my first entrepreneurial stint as a hairdresser. So mm. I had my own business and um, yeah, that kicked off really, really well. So I ended up eventually training hairdressers at the age of 20 to kind of become entrepreneurs and build their own business. And I can say that 15 of them kind of went off and built five to six figure businesses successfully. So that was awesome. Um, but it also made me realize that I was quite young. There was still so much to learn. So I decided to kind of take everything with me, move to London and just go into the corporate world and kind of learn how the real business in corporate is kind of set up as such mm. um, and then I think eight years down the line I realized how all of these elements were sitting together and the the energy inside of me was always there that I wanted to have something of my own eventually again and um, after doing some studies and some courses I kind of took the plunge um, about a year ago now um, to yeah to start my business as business consultant, business partner, helping startup businesses, um, as well as coaches and consultants that want to take a jump in the deep end as such to build their own business and really build that foundation for them. All right. That's really great. So how long have you been like a, been an entrepreneur yourself, like after like a, a living your corporate job? Um, so it's been a year now, 12 months. Um, okay. exactly uh, in this in this element as such all right that's great so congratulations for your one year into like a business running a business like uh, obviously uh, we think about it in a different world and when you actually do the things it's like a completely different world as well like uh, when you just get to feel that when you actually feel in feel like uh, playing for the uh, team like uh, that's like a different environment isn't it so yeah. and you said like you talk about mostly about them three pillars in business like uh, when you coach your like uh, other entrepreneurs and so what are those three pillars like you normally talk about yeah so what i've kind of seen um throughout the years of of being in corporate but also when i was um an entrepreneur before was that there were three elements that really kind of set up a successful foundation for anyone to go further and start developing their business as such. And those three pillars are, one is health, and that is very much the holistic health. So that encounters like your mindset, your nutrition, your physical health, um, your spirituality, your relationships, like all of these elements are kind of intertwined and impact how your also able to to run your business as such so that is one piece of the of the foundation then the other part is the strategy like we can all have a goal but if we don't really know how to get to that goal or at least have some sort of plan bird's eye view then it becomes very difficult to find our, our journey and our road as such and then the the last one is the strategy and processes i think there is always an element of having systems in place that can really help you automate your business, run it more smoothly, um, really be able to give you more time back and basically get more um, money for, for the time spent, but also the process to really make things easy to implement and to continue doing them over and over again as such. Um, and I think once you have a process, you don't have to think about it as much anymore, yeah. simplifying again to build on top of that. So those are the, the three core pieces that I work a lot with, with my clients to establish. All right. 
That's great. So in terms of like when you started your business 12 months ago, like how did you implement those three pillars in your business? So if you can start off the first one. Yeah, of course. Um, So I think health for me has always been top of mind. Um, I I was a quite a high achieving gymnast at a young age. So the, the physical and the nutritional has always been there. It's been a core of my life as such. And um, I then did a study about five years ago around um, holistic health coaching. So that kind of, I started to learn more about how all of these parts were implemented. And I think the core piece there is really starting with understanding myself. So who am I? Why am I doing the things that I'm doing? Why is my body reacting in certain ways to certain foods? Why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? I'm really starting to dive into that self-awareness piece that you get to know yourself and understanding what works for you and what doesn't. Like, why are you maybe feeling sad after someone has said something? How does that impact you? And why does it impact you, right? So um, I've done, I've gone through a, whole personal development journey um i think it's already been five six years in the work as such um so i had covered a good part of that before i even started my business i was in a good place right that being said i think for everyone once you start in this journey of entrepreneurship it's kind of like all right there's a whole lot of other stuff that automatically comes up because you're doing something new and mm. therefore, you're required to do something different as well. And that requires you to think different and to have other type of daily actions as such. So, um, yeah, it's a continuous journey. But what I've really focused on with health is making sure I get my exercise in, that I have very whole foods that I implement into my diets, that I get enough sleep, that I have enough sunlight, I supplement where needed. And then the other elements of just having that social connection with people taking rest days. Um, I think that's a very core piece for a lot of starting entrepreneurs that we're very focused on hustling, getting out there and kind of yes. disregarding all of these elements. But I think they're actually much more important because I, they can give you the energy and the the performance is much higher when you focus on these things. Um, so yeah, journaling, meditating, there's a whole list of things that I'm doing yeah. on a daily basis to really make sure that yeah my health is optimal and I prioritize them above my business as well. So that's a key for me. Yeah, that should be, isn't it? Like uh, we prioritize like uh, the profit, the revenue and the customer but we forget the main person who is the driver of the whole business like if you're not taking care of yourself you burn out like you keep up then obviously whole things that fall apart isn't it and yeah. so that is like obviously it, that is really important pillar of like anything like your relationship or even though like a, in a personal life health is the most important part otherwise there is no point like you have a greatest spouse or partner greatest business in the world greatest everything in the world but if we can't enjoy that then there is no point about any of that so no, exactly. that leads to like a second one yeah yeah go and ahead I, I I was going to say, like, they always say, like, without health, you don't have anything. And yeah. it's true, right? You can have all the money in the world, but if you're sick, then it kind of ends there. And yeah. I think, yeah, it's it's just really important that we prioritize that. And it's uh, your business is an embodiment of you. And I think if your energy is really good and you people see it to you as well, like, if you feel good, you kind of shy, shine that through, right? Other people will notice and... That is also the reason why people might want to work with you. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a, a two-way street there. Yeah, definitely. And that leads to a like, second question, which is like a, the second pillar, which is like a goals is, you mentioned. So in terms of like a business goals, like how, how did you establish your business goals at the beginning of it? Not knowing like where you're going to be heading because there is no a past experience in it because you haven't run the business for five years. Like obviously you're going for like uncertain uh, territory, like where you're going to be either the business going to success really well or you're going to fail. Right. And so how, how did you plan your goals for, for before you started? Yeah, so I used a, a 12 month intention plan. Um, so that meant that I started kind of with the end in mind, meaning mm -hmm. I had a revenue goal that I focused on. And then I had some ultimate milestones that I wanted to hit as well from a non revenue perspective. And what I then did is I 
I kind of divided that in four quarters and right. set a revenue goal for each quarter and set one of the key goals alongside the revenue that I want to embark on. Um, and then from there, I kind of started to make the or chunk it down in even smaller pieces and kind of started working with that. But what I one key thing that I always share is that it's really good to have a goal and to kind of work towards something and to build it back because it gives you that roadmap. But don't attach yourself to the goal. Like yeah. as everything in life, there will always things there will always be things that might happen that are out of your control that will derail you from where you're at or maybe you set a certain revenue goal and you're not able to hit it because you you put it too high for the first instance or there are other elements you need to work through first and I think what happens nine out of ten times is that if we're not able to hit the goal it really puts people down and it makes them question if they're even capable of doing that. And mm. especially in the whole social media element where everyone is kind of shouting off the rooftops, like hit your hundred K within the first month of business or within the next three months, it's, it's very pushed the narrative of, okay, you need to see instant success. And what I've tried to really implement within my own business and help other people with is it's good to have a goal. So you have the roadmap, but detach from the goal as well, that if you do not hit it, look back, what can you yeah. do different? Learn from the lessons and then implement that for the next quarter and move forward that way. And I think also that plays a part in it. When you start your business, you're kind of testing the waters. You might yeah. be trying out new things and it's required to find your own way, which in my opinion is very important as well. Like learn what works for you because what works for me might not be working for you and vice versa, right? So we have to find our own way and the best way to do that is by testing and trying out and give yourself room to do that too. So um, yeah, it's making sure to have the end goal, but also detach from it so that you give yourself the room to trial and error and grow as you go. Yeah, that, that needs to be, isn't it? Like I uh, totally agree with you because if you've fixated a certain goal and if you don't hit it, then you are a failure, right? Uh, even though you achieve so many things, probably you achieve 80%, 70% of your goal and along the way you learn so many things from your customers your clients that gives you so much feedback but instead of we doing that like uh, we go through like oh I didn't hit the 100% of the goal like I'm a failure disaster things like that and you talked about like in social media people are posting like a 10k within a month and something like that I interviewed so many people and just to get on the like a podcast or just to get on like any kind of attention, they would tell you like they're seven figure earner, then they did this and they did that. And then when you go deep and dive into it, like they're like, a, they don't have that kind of money. They never build it and they never gone through the process. And that, yeah. because I'm in a service-based business. So we work with often kind of businesses. Those people are like bragging about it on social media. So when they come and book a call with us, like on a consultation, I wouldn't name any of the businesses. And they go on the consultation when we say like, what's your marketing budget and what's your revenue? Then it's like shocking. Like those people are, you can tell like that way they are like running the business or posting on social media. They're probably $10 million revenue businesses. But when it comes to it, they're even not doing like a half a million a year. And they don't have it like $2,000 investing in the business on a monthly basis just to scale the business. So, yeah. so that is like an interesting moment. So who are those people are actually making money? That's like a question right now. But those people are actually showing it. They, they 99% of them are not making it. And those who are actually making it, they're not bothered to come here and show it and expose it on social media because they're already making it. Like you can yeah. see like a, a, a Jeff Bezos or like Mark Zuckerberg, like they don't have to show that. Like people are knows, like they're not bragging, oh, I'm on 100K or oh, my crypto portfolio is like 1 million because they don't have to brag that because it's already happening, right? Like everyone can see that. So, yeah. yeah, like we can carry on with that conversation for a long time, but I, I look to know more <laughs> about like your third pillar, which is like a strategy you, you mentioned. So how do you strategize uh, your whole business, like a, what the system or process you followed? Yeah. So for systems and processes, I uh, like in my corporate job, I've I've kind of been across all of the 
the main departments that makes up a business. And one thing that I've really learned there is that we have to simplify everything as much as possible. Mm. And that is within a business where we most of the time have multiple people in different departments to be able to run with it. So let alone starting a business from scratch on your own or with just two people means we need to simplify as much as possible. So that means to me, have only one system that can do it all rather than trying to have five different systems that can help you build out a journey. And one of the pitfalls I see so many people make is they start something out of passion and they want to help people. And then what ends up happening, they have to implement a system for, for example, scheduling a call, right? So an automatic calendar schedule then they want to have an email market marketing platform so that they can send out new mm. newsletters. Then they want to have a social media planner so that they can repost on all different platforms. Um, then there is a website that needs to be built, landing pages that need to be built. And all of these things kind of usually sit on different platforms. So I very early on partnered with a system that I truly believe in and kind of has everything in one place. And there are different platforms for different uh, purposes. So coaches has different platforms than maybe a, a startup business um, within the corporate world as such. But yeah, I focus on just one system um, that I would like to implement with that person that can then automate most of that business and run everything through there. And then what we do is we build things out into processes. So every time I do something with someone or I give them a template or already a, an existing process, I make it in a way that it can be repurposed over and over and over again. Right. And the the best part of that is that it doesn't really need to change it's already been tested it's already working the only tweaks that you need to make is when you look at your data at the end and be like okay i've done a launch of a program what is my conversion looking like um, and what do i potentially need to tweak and when we tweak it we also amend the process straight away make sure it's in writing so that they always have it there and the best part of that is that I can then hire a virtual assistant and say, here's a process, please start implementing it. Mm -hmm. um, or when it's already in a live system, you can just clone it and reuse it. So yeah, I always make sure that everything is as simplified as possible. Focus on as little elements as needed. Focus on as little systems as needed to begin with. Um, and then start building from there as you go. All right, that's great. Thank you so much for that. So, uh, Gita, so before we leave, we need to come to the end of this podcast. Uh, with our all of the listeners listening, if you want to give anyone like one advice, if they're starting out their business or just started already, probably like yourself, what would be your number one advice to them? Ooh, my number one advice. Oh, um, I think focus on yourself. Like I just like we just mentioned, a lot of us are out there consuming a lot of information from others who seem to have it all. And it's great that we're living in a world where we do have the ability to get all of this information from the web and listen to YouTubes and to podcasts. And it's really good that we share all of our stories, but at the same time, also take time away from all of that and just listen to yourself check in with yourself like what is it that you want because I do truly believe that we all have the answers already within us that we all know what to do but that we're kind of afraid of maybe implementing it and getting it wrong Um, so I would highly suggest for anyone starting to make sure that if you consume a lot to also take time away from consuming and just trialing out your own thing. Um, it all comes down to, to just giving it a try. And if you, if you fail, then you fail, you pick yourself back up and you start again. That's entrepreneurship. You will never get it hundred percent right all of the time. So you might as well just give yourself the opportunity to, to trial an error and, 80% of it is in your mind. So focus on making sure that you talk positively to yourself when you go through these elements as well. Um, so yeah. 
That's great. Thank you so much for the advice. So yeah, we're coming to end of this podcast. Before we leave, if anyone wants to learn more about yourself, your business, where's the best place to find you? So they can find me on basically any social media platforms. Um, just my name, which isn't the most easiest, but gets a end of Leard. Um, I'm on uh, Instagram. I'm on TikTok. I am on LinkedIn. So those are probably the best places to come and say hi to me. That's great. Thank you so much for your time today. I wish you best of luck with your business, your personal life. And thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure as mine. Thank you. So that's a wrap, guys. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast episode. I hope you enjoyed our conversation. If anyone wants to learn more about uh, Gigi, you can reach out to her on a social media platform. So until then, I'll talk to you in the next episode. Take care.